Hello everybody, my name is Sara de la Bat. I am with the Soft Robotics and Haptics Lab at University College London. Today I'm going to talk about the significance of the compliance of the joints on the dynamic slip resistance of a bio inspired hoof. This research was done while I was working at Imperial College London under supervision of Dr. Trejanta Nanayakara and has been already published in the Transaction of Robotics Journal in 2019. I am glad to have the opportunity also to present this research in ICRA 2020. As we can see in this video, goats have remarkable climbing abilities. They are able to walk over this unstructured environment. They are even able to walk easily over vertical dams and even climbing over trees. Nevertheless, the mobility of the robots in this kind of environment is still a challenge. It has to be pointed out that a quarter of a second is critical even for the goats for avoiding sliding and dying. That is why we believe that not all the computation is done at the brain. We believe that at the hoof level some computation is done in order to simplify the adaptability of the goats to this kind of unstructured environment. That is why in this research we are focused on understanding how the embodiment of the hoof can contribute to solve the problem of its deep resistance. In order to address this research question, we have taken a bio-inspired approach. That means that we have studied the biological hoof in order to build a robotic counterpart. As we can see in these figures, both has a similar bone structure and similar number of joints. One big difference is that in the biological hoof, the joints have mobility in different axes, while in the robotic hoof, for simplicity, we have limit the mobility to only one axis. That is why we have for the roll we have the fetlock joint, for the yaw we have the pastor joint, and for the pitch we have the coffin joint. For simplicity, during this presentation we will use theta for denote the movement in the roll, we will use beta for denote the movement on the pitch, and we will use gamma for denote the movement in the yaw. Another important aspect of the biological hoof, it is the interdigital ligament and the tendons. The ligament passively limits the, uh, how much the toes are spreading, while the tendons allows to actively control the movement of the toes using the muscles. Nevertheless, in this research, we are focused on understanding the dynamics of the hoof. That's why we are developing a totally passive design. That is why we are using a linear spring for the interdigital ligament, and for the tendons, we are using antagonistic springs in order to passively limit or control the upward and downward movement of the toes. Another important aspect, it is the shape of the claw. As we can see, they have sharp ends that allows the, the goats to catch even the small cracks. So when they are walking over vertical dams, they can put all the weight on the tips, and that is how they are able to walk on this kind of an structured environment. In order to have a similar behavior, we have taken that shape of the claws into the robotic hoof as well. In order to understand how the passive dynamics of the hoof contribute to improve the deep resistance, we have used an analytical model. In this case, we are assuming that an external force, Fs, is sliding the hoof in the x direction. Another assumption that we are using it is that each link has only the gravitational potential energy. Additionally, we are assuming that the hoof has a similar behavior for the left and the right toe. Furthermore, the shape of the cloid is a segment of a sphere, which at the end leads to a single contact point with the ground. In order to validate the results from the analytical model, we are using an experimental setup. In this case, we are using an external force that is given by the XY stage for sliding the hoof. And in order to quantify the slip resistance, we are using the amount of energy required for the slide the hoop a certain distance. That is why we are using a force sensor to track the force and we are using markers to capture how the different parts of the hoop are moving. This video shows how the force and the position of the markers has been acquired for 
each one of the trials during the experiments. It has to be highlighted that for understanding the contribution of each of the joints, we have used four compliance levels for each one of them, which at the end led to 64 combinations. And for simplicity, we have divided the presentation of the results into three groups. So we have the combinations who require a low, medium, and high energy for red light hook. Something that has to be highlighted it is that for the high energy combinations, not only the magnitude of the force is high, but also the variability or the vibrations in the signals for the force and the angles, it is lower compared to the low energy and the medium energy combinations. Based on the simulation and experimental results for the energy needed to slide the hook, we can say that for the yo, we need a high compliance level for improving the slip resistance. On the other hand, for the roll, we require a low compliance level. There is a difference between the simulation and experimental results for the pitch. This difference can be explained by the assumptions that we took for the mathematical model. In this case, this led to low variation of the pitch in the simulation results, while in the experiments we showed that the variability of the pitch is higher. Another reason of the difference between the simulation and the experiments, it is that in the mathematical model we have assumed that the left and the right toe have a similar behavior. However, the experimental results show that both have a different behavior. These results highlight the importance of having a higher compliance in the yo and a low compliance in the rho. That means that the contribution of the yo is essential while that of the rho it is mean. Contributions at future work of this research are the following. First of all, the natural dynamics of a robotic hoop have been studied in order to understand how they can passively contribute to increase the slip resistance. Additionally, a simplified dynamic model has been provided, which in the future can be used for actively control the robotic hoop. Additionally, the findings of the robotic hoop can be a starting point for biologists to further understand how the biological growth hoop is working because so far limited research is done in this area. The finding of this robotic hoop also allows to simplify the control of robots for outdoor applications and finally, also, the findings in this robotic hoop allows to simplify the design of the robotic hoop, which in the long term allows to further understand the natural dynamics of the robotic hoop, taking into account other factors such as anisotropy. Before finishing this presentation, I would like to thank you for the interest in this research and in this presentation. And I also would like to thank to all the people who support me in this study. If you require further information, please send me an email.